country, 105.1 WILQ, Trace Atkins, then they do. Well, we hope you're having a wonderful Monday morning, and on the phone with me right now is Darcy Lynn. And to introduce you to Darcy, she is a singer ventriloquist. Now, she's the youngest contestant to ever win NBC's America's Got Talent, and she's going to be at the Bloomsburg Fair on September 27th. That'll be Monday night at 6.30 p.m., Darcy, it must be awfully early out there in Oklahoma City this morning. Good morning. How are you doing? <laughs> Good morning. It's not too early. It's around 9, but I'm usually I don't wake up till 10. Do you get a chance to stay at home a lot, or you're always out on the road? Well, usually I'm always out on the road, but this past year I've, I've been home the whole year, which was kind of crazy, um, but I'm, I'm excited to be back out on the road. It's what I love to do. Well, you were very young when you got introduced to ventriloquism. How did that happen? Yeah, so I was um, around 10 when mm-hmm. I started ventriloquism. Um, I met a girl who did it, and I was just mesmerized, and I had to do it, so I taught myself in my bathroom here. <laughs> and then went on from there. But I've, I've almost been doing it for seven years now. Now, you, you started out with one puppet, and what was the name of that puppet, and do you still have that one puppet? Yeah, so um, I started with a puppet from eBay, um, and she wasn't like a real ventriloquist puppet. She was uh, kind of hard to maneuver and everything, but she was a good starting one. I still do have her. I don't use her anymore, but I do have her. Her name's her name's Katie, mm-hmm. and I actually um, got a whole new puppet that's an actual ventriloquist puppet to replace her. So they look different, but they're the same character. So you both, they're, they're both Katie, like Katie 1 and Katie 2? Yes, I just, I just don't use the first one anymore. <laughs> okay, now how about Katie 1? Does she get jealous of Katie 2 or not? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I haven't talked in a while, but I'm, I'm sure if I asked her. <laughs> yeah, you, is it too early to wake her up? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I, I really, she is, oh, I think she's in a suitcase in the closet here in the house somewhere. Oh, okay. I really, I haven't seen her in a while. She is, a, yeah, I haven't used her in like five years. Crazy. Yeah, well, listen, you've been blessed uh, for, from the start. First of all, I think everything begins with family, and you've had tremendous family support and encouragement along the way. Uh, tell us about your mom and dad and siblings. How many brothers and sisters do you have? So I actually have three brothers. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> all right. I, I mean, I used to wish for a sister every year on my birthday, but Now I'm just like, I love my brothers. I wouldn't ever trade them for the world. But, uh, yeah, so I love my brothers. They've been super supportive of me, nothing but supportive. And uh, my parents um, are just the best ever. I couldn't have asked for um, better parents because they've really um, gone out of their way to support me and everything I've wanted to do. And they've really also helped keep me grounded and stay true to who I am through all this craziness. Um so I, I really appreciate that of them, and they're just, they're the best. Well, that's very important to make sure that you stay grounded. And you've had opportunities. You, you have played at t- some tremendous uh, venues, like the Grand Old Opry. What was that like? Oh, my gosh. It was, it was, it was such an experience. It was crazy. I mean, I just, there's so many things that I can say I've done that I just, I'm like, did I really do that? <laughs> and, that's one, and that's one of them. It's just, it was the coolest thing ever. <laughs> well, then you opened up for Fergie at Caesar's Palace. Talk about a different venue and a different change of uh, of venue. How did that work out for you? That was so fun. I mean, we got to go to Las Vegas, which, I mean, I was so young. so it's, Sure. Vegas is kind of just like, ooh, Vegas. But um, it was still fun. Um, we got to, I think I rode the roller coaster on New York, New York, <laughs> and all <laughs> those fun things. And But, um, but uh, opening for Fergie was so crazy she is she's very down to earth and very nice and she's very talented as well so that was really cool well then you had an nbc christmas special how was that how did that get put together oh my gosh yeah i just it's crazy to hear you list all these things i've done i'm like what <laughs> crazy <laughs> but uh yeah so the christmas special i did back in 2018 and or 2019 i'm i think i'm blanking on which year but uh, it was um that was so cool because we had so many amazing celebrities on it. Um, guests, we had Toby Keith, the Pentatonix, um, gosh, Kristen Chenoweth, um, 
just Hunter Hayes, so many cool, cool people, and Lindsey Sterling. It was just so fun. And to be able to host my own show was also a very cool experience, and I learned a lot as well. So it was just, it was so much fun. You know, you've done so much in your very young life. Do you have, when you look at yourself as far as like 10 years from now, I mean, what do you do for an encore? A lot of people would probably spend their whole life trying to achieve what you've done at such an early age. Do your parents kind of talk to you about that and set goals and objectives for what you want to do later on in your life? Yeah, I mean, we talked to, we definitely talked about it. You know, they're like, what do you want to do? Where do you see yourself in five years? And I'm like, I just, it's hard to answer that question because I have so many goals, so many goals. And um, I just, I, I find myself wanting to do it all, really. <laughs> well, you will. You just have to take it one day at a time, right? Of course. That's yeah. what I've been telling myself. It's just, um, right now, I really don't have, like, a, this is what I'm going to be doing, and then this is what I want to do now, and then that's what I want to do later. And I don't know. I'm kind of just letting God's timing work everything out and just to go with the flow and wherever uh, he takes me, then that's where I'll go. That's wonderful, and that's that, I'm glad that you uh, have a frog there. You're fully relying on God. That's that's really important. Hey, listen, so your, your tour, My Lips Are Sealed, except when they're not. That's a clever name and a title. Have you started that tour yet? Um, yes. So I had my first show Friday, um, which was just, it was so much fun, kicking it off in Minnesota, and it was just, it was great. It went as well as I wanted it to, and all of the new um, songs and new jokes um, went great, and it was just, it was so, it felt so good to be back on the stage. So do you have to sit down and you write all, all your material, you write out your whole um, show, is that how you do it, or do you have help, do you have writers with you? Um, uh, it's, yeah, it's been a big collaboration. I mm -hmm. mean, I'll have great ideas, and then my parents love great ideas, and I actually have um, and a couple other people that have good ideas that we write with. And so, yeah, it's been it's been really fun writing all the material. Well, you're going to be coming to the Bloomsburg Fair. It'll be September 27th, Monday at 6.30 p.m. And at the fair is just huge. People from all over central Pennsylvania, uh, they attend this thing, 100,000 people probably. Uh, they're, they're just going to enjoy your show. Tell us right now with all our listeners that are listening and wanting to purchase tickets to see your show, what would they expect when they show up to see My Lips Are Sealed? Well, it is a very family-friendly show, so you can bring your whole family. Um, there's going to be live music, so live band playing all my songs. Um, some great comedy. I mean, I think I'm a little funny. I might be a little biased. <laughs> <laughs> all five of my friends will be there, and it's just a great show to come on down. And great night out of town with your family, and um, yeah. It's going to be fun. Yeah, ventriloquism, you look back at some of the the big players that are still involved, including you, but there's Jeff uh, Dunham, of course. He's popular now. Did you ever get involved with and in, in watching any of the Edgar Bergen stuff with Charlie McCarthy and that? I have seen a little bit um, of Edgar Bergen, of course. Mm -hmm. um, but I think I definitely watched Jeff Dunham and Terry Sater more um, than I did some of the older great and ventriloquism because I think they were just more my time. But um, for sure, Ed Kubergen and Jimmy Nelson and, yeah. Well, that's wonderful. Hey, I want to thank you for your time. I appreciate you calling in this morning, and we look forward to seeing you on September 27th, and we hope that you have a, a great tour and uh, stay safe and stay healthy out there, and we look forward to maybe chatting with you uh, sometime around the 27th. Thank you so much for talking to me this morning. All right. Thank you, Darcy Lamb.